that's on my list. Like, I really do trust him as a person. You know, maybe I shouldn't, but if he were running as president, I would definitely vote for him. There, I don't care what he's running under. I just trust him. And maybe that's foolish, but to me, that would be my best chance in my lifetime because I'll well, never be able to do something like that. You're too late. Uh, you know, Ron Paul's last run was in 2012, so that one's pretty right. much so, done but for. How, my question, though, is based upon that, what if he came out and said, you know what, I back whoever the Libertarian Party nominated. What if he said, I would back my son, though? You know, well, I back Rand Paul. Would you then trust him enough no. to say, you know what, if he says that, then I would? To date, Ron Paul still has not donated to the <laughs> Rand Paul 2016 campaign. Now, is that, but has he backed him verbally, though? I mean, has Not he? that I've heard. Really? I'd be surprised about that. I mean, that, that to me says something. So I guess I'll keep. I mean, I guess I was just want to talk to you all about that possibility. Like, what if he does come out and say, hey, you know what? I'm. You know, you could. After weighing everything, I really do back Rand Paul. You know, would that I, I would lose a little bit of respect all? for Ron. Yeah, I'm not sure if he should just show sports because, oh, he's my kid. Well, I mean, that's why I would understand if he did, right? I mean, if Ron Paul comes out in well, favor. Well, I'm thinking, like, like, what if they, you know, because he's talked to Rand his whole life, right? Right. I'm sure. Surely he's taught him what you would teach your son if you had a son. I mean, surely he taught him that. So how far does the apple really fall from the tree? You know, if Rand if Ron came out and said, look, guys, it's, I mean, it can, sure. I And I... You're right about that. I'm just wondering if this is that type of a situation or if if Ron Paul did back him, what would you think? Thanks about for it? the call, Andrew. Appreciate it. Anything you want to uh, add to that, Daryl? I mean, Ron Paul, obviously he's got a lot of weight within the Liberty community. People will listen very closely to what he has to say. I, I think people would jump on... Ron, the same way they did when he endorsed some of the bad Republicans down in Texas in, I think it was 2010, where he had signed a pledge of, I'll endorse all incumbents that are Republican running for re-election in the Congress. Mm, I and, remember that, yeah. You know, one of those happened to be the guy that introduced, I think it was CISPA, which was the something internet, mm. we're going to spy on you whatever under right. the guise of intellectual property he endorsed that guy he got called out on it and then there were actually people it was john bush that called him out on it and there were actually people that jumped on john bush saying you shouldn't question this old man uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you certainly don't want to raise someone like ron paul to the level of a deity i mean whatever he comes out of his mouth isn't necessarily golden he's not right you know, 100% libertarian on every issue every time, but he's way better on every issue than Rand Paul. Yes. And so, yeah, it will be interesting, uh, Daryl. So I take it you've been looking at the FEC filings and you're the, did you, or were you the one who dug up the information about him not donating? Somebody or? had posted, there's a website that I check in on every so often called independentpoliticalreport.com. And somebody had mentioned in one of the threads about the Rand Paul claiming to get the endorsement of the libertarians, somebody posted and Ron still has not donated to Rand. <laughs> and so then I went to the <laughs> FEC and I checked to verify. Cause you can look at all of you his know, because, you donators. Know, like, trust, but verify mm -hmm. and looked and yep, sure enough. Wow. He's not donated to the Rand Paul campaign. Well, now you only have to report if it's over 200, correct? That's correct. So in theory, he could have donated $100 and it wouldn't have been on the books. In theory. <laughs> but if you, the the way it is, it's 200 cumulative, not 200 one time. 200 through the entire campaign. Right. Right. So if he you know gave him like $100 today and then $100 six months mm -hmm. ago, that's $200. So would be reported. So uh, coming up here, Daryl, you had the 10 reasons to not support the Free the Nipple Project. But since we're talking about Rand Paul, I've had a, a little piece here from Politico.com written by Jonathan Bidlack and is entitled Why I'm Tired of Defending Rand Paul. Since serving as Ron Paul's fundraising director in 2008, 
I've often been asked what made Congressman Paul so popular. Why he was able to raise so much money, especially online. Remember that? Remember the Ron Paul money bomb that was like $20 million or something like yeah, that? Yeah, some outrageous that. amount. In and a- that, that led Glenn Beck to say that Ron Paul was a terrorist because <laughs> his campaign fundraiser was called Money Bomb! Oh, yeah. bomb, bomb, right. terrorist, bomb! Bomb! Terrorist! Bomb! Only terrorists say bomb! <laughs> Yeah, it was great stuff. And all of that was created by the Ron Paul fanatics, by the it, people. It was who, grassroots. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, in fact, the guy who created the Ron Paul Money Bombs, a Free State Project participant. His Woo-hoo! name's Trevor Lyman. Anyway, in a recent months, the new question has replaced the old ones. And that is will his son be able to do the same? Nope. <laughs> nope. Er- earlier this year, when reporters began calling to ask for my predictions about how Paul the Younger's fundraising momentum would compare to his father's, I behaved as I thought was appropriate. I hedged. I bit my tongue. I answered cautiously. Through it all, I haven't said what now seems increasingly obvious. There is little chance that Rand Paul's momentum will ever match that of Ron Paul. The unfortunate reason is clear. Rand Paul doesn't stand for much of anything anymore. And did he ever? Dismal headlines this week in Politico, like Inside Rand Paul's uh, Downward Spiral, The Washington Post's The Most Interesting Man in Politics Isn't Drawing Much Interest in New Hampshire, and The Daily Beast, The Cancer on Rand Paul's Campaign, all but write an obituary for what was supposed to be a generation-shifting campaign. Regardless of whether one is inclined to believe the media, it's no longer possible to ignore the fact that Paul's support is slipping. His uh, New Hampshire numbers have dropped from 14% in February to just 4%. According to a poll released on Sunday, uh, by comparison, Ron Paul received nearly 8% of the state's vote in 2008 and over 22% in 2014, or excuse me, 2012. Senator Paul's national ratings, though they matter little at this point, have also dropped. Uh, Senator Paul has raised significantly less than most major candidates, pulling in $6.9 million, including a $1.6 million transfer from his Senate committee. Affiliated super PACs have raised only $5 million. Meanwhile, Jeb Bush's super PAC has raised 103 and Ted Cruz's with over 37 million. And I've got news about the head of one of Rand Paul's super PACs. Mm. And we'll compare his raisings to his dad here in a moment as well. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Sick of Rand Paul yet? Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. 
Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed the results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. Now, more Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and you can also call us up on Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. Whether you want to talk about protectionism or Rand Paul, that's where we've been so far. Coming up, we'll talk about the bees. Apparently, they are back. Danica's got that story. And also, Daryl, with 10 reasons to not support the Free the Nipple campaign. Not necessarily that you agree with those 10 reasons, Daryl. Right. Uh, I, I would say there's probably only three of them that I in some way would agree with we'll see what that is because i haven't read them yet so i'm interested because i'm a supporter of it i think it's a great idea uh, so we'll get to that when we get the chance uh, also i want to let you know about pro xpn if you're getting online whether you're getting online on windows linux uh, mac whatever you know ios devices android pro xpn can help protect you from people that want to save your surfing history like your very own internet service provider or maybe criminals trying to sniff out your wi-fi packets Pro XPN can help protect you. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started right now for free, but when you use code FTL50, you'll save 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you get the annual account with code FTL50. It breaks the price down to around $5 a month, and with that premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. It's proxpn.com slash FTL. The story from politico.com is written by Jonathan Bidlack. He is the former fundraising director for Ron Paul's campaign back in 2008. And he says that in the beginning of this year, when reporters were calling asking for his predictions about how uh, Rand Paul's fundraising momentum would compare to his father's, he hedged, he bit his tongue, and he answered cautiously. But now he is saying what seems increasingly obvious, that there's little chance that Rand's momentum will match his father's. They give some numbers here about his fundraising thus far, uh, pointing out that he's raised a lot less than most of the major candidates, but also by comparison, in the last quarters of 2007, in the last two quarters, Ron Paul, who had literally 0% name, ID, and early analysis, raised $25.2 million, second to only 
uh, to Rudy Giuliani's 26 million. Uh, Super PACs, of course, were not a factor. Rand Paul thus far uh, in 2015, which is not the same as judging it by the last two quarters of 2007, but he's only up to uh, one point, or excuse me, six six point nine million uh, raised thus far. In 2007, Ron Paul's success was called astounding. In 2015, Rand Paul finds himself having to explain his paltry returns. How did we get here? Perhaps I should start by answering how I got here. In 2007, I was preparing to transition beyond my first post-college job, and like many 23-year-olds, wasn't sure exactly to what. Weighing, uh, weighing law school or maybe business school, politics wasn't on my radar when a friend sent me an article by Radley Balco entitled Ron Paul, The Real Republican. When you read about a vote in Congress that goes something like 412 to 1, odds are pretty good that the sole nay may have come from Representative Ron Paul, wrote Balco. Paul isn't a reflexive contrarian. He doesn't oppose just to oppose. Rather, he has a core set of principles that guide him. They happen to be the same principles envisioned by the framers of the U.S. Constitution. Limited government, federalism, free trade, and commerce with a premium on peace. And, of course, anybody who has paid attention to Ron Paul knows that's a pretty accurate statement about the man. I was hooked. The more I read about the congressman from Texas, the more excited I became. Like thousands of people across the country, I joined my local meetup group. These online grassroots organizing communities sprung up by the thousands all around the country. Some of them are still operating today, from what I understand. Together, ours blanketed the Fairfield County, Connecticut with homemade signs and Ron Paul literature. I'll never forget sitting in a small chain restaurant one night and passing around a basket to gather some extra cash for canvassing supplies. Within 20 minutes, we'd raised over $1,000. I was no longer uncertain about my career path. I sent my resume to the campaign hoping for a regional post, but found myself interviewing in Washington, D.C., and then being tapped by campaign chairman Kent Snyder as the director of fundraising. In retrospect, I'm not sure if our scrappy office of 20-somethings crowded above an Arlington dry cleaner realized how significantly we were changing the world, but every person in the office deeply believed in what we were doing. This energy translated into innovative and wildly successful fundraising, most of it, by the way, not done by the campaign. We ultimately raised over $35 million, largely online and via social media, well before Obama for America mastered the craft. There was one major reason for that success— Congressman Paul exuded a sincerity that even those who disagreed with him had to respect and that his base found electrifying. Paul had one of the most consistent voting records in Congress and hasn't changed his message over time, as viral clips proved. His message, limited government with even more limited foreign intervention, respect for the individual, sound money, and fiscal responsibility brought together a diverse and dedicated following. And while Paul is staunchly pro-life, he avoided the type of alienating social issues rhetoric that many Republicans struggle with. Ultimately, of course, Congressman Paul would not be president. His steadfast and sometimes quirky libertarianism failed to make inroads within the GOP, but it ignited a nationwide movement that hungered for someone to take it to the next level. Now, before we go on here, I'd like to thank Ron Paul for doing what he did and all the people who supported him, because not... It's not Rand Paul who is the true successor to Ron Paul. It's the whole liberty movement. I mean, Ron, right. When Ron Paul left the scene in after the 2012 campaign, a lot of people were wondering, well, now what? You know, is is everybody going to put their hope in his son and hope that he can pull this off in 2016? Well, you know, people already knew at that time that his son was just a shadow of uh, of right. Ron, and so really. The, you know, the real question is, what is next for the liberty movement? And to me, the answer, of course, is free state, the Free State Project. You know, Ron Paul has actually endorsed the Free State Project, I believe, on more than one occasion. Uh, he has spoken at the Free State Project's Liberty Forum event several years ago. I don't think he's ever been at the, at the, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I don't think so. No. But, you know, he's not unfamiliar with the Free State Project. You're seeing Free State Project participants getting elected unlike libertarians all around the rest of the country, free staters are actually making an impact here in New Hampshire politics and outside of New Hampshire politics. And so the liberty movement is much bigger than one man, but it certainly is true that Ron Paul is responsible for bringing millions of people to the ideas of liberty and to relatively principled ideas of liberty. And that's something his son will never accomplish I, I don't want to disagree for the sake of disagreeing, 
But just because Ron Paul espoused the ideas on television does not make Ron Paul responsible for someone coming to the ideas of liberty. That no, that's person true. had to like you have you to know, research. do their own sort of work. But I, I've heard people say, you know, like I would never have uh you know learned this or that or that and, you know like i owe everything to ron paul oh yeah absolutely. no you don't like you know just because some guy said something and you heard it on tv does not mean that you owe everything to well, him you, you probably owe like a certain portion of it i mean i don't think i ever would have gotten involved with the free state project or known about it had it not been for some of the things i read about uh, about Ron, Ron Paul, Paul during college, I was just like, "Wow, this guy is really, really interesting." That's. I think that it's a fair thing to say that Ron Paul was the first gateway to the liberty movement. Um, That's fair, but to say like I owe it all to him, yeah, I, I would say as a stretch. We'll come back with more. It's free talk live. Affordable health insurance was the promise of Obamacare, but for many, the government mandate caused more problems than it solved. And I want to tell you about a truly affordable alternative, Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare bypasses doctor and hospital panels, giving you the freedom to choose. 100% coverage up to $1 million per year per occurrence, which includes dental, vision, pharmacy, and holistic care. Call 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993 today. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. Then I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from HiddenHolster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The Hidden Holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. 
everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. This is Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Yeah! This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free, 855-450 free. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up, reasons someone says people should not support the Free the Nipple campaign, uh, which I am a supporter of, but we'll get into those when we get the chance. With you in studio, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Express coin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, Litecoin, and the really popular Dogecoin. It's really shot up the charts I uh, was over at coincap.io, and it's like number five, I think, of all the cryptocurrencies right now. Dogecoin's doing pretty good. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they are a licensed money services business. So go to expresscoin.com, and whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you out. You can get cryptocurrencies with money order or a check through expresscoin.com. You can even do it through your smartphone with their app, which you can also get at expresscoin.com. Don't forget, coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. And you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all by using coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. We'll uh, get back to Rand Paul, the campaign, uh, one of the campaign staffers from the Ron Paul campaign in 2008. The fundraising director is saying he's tired of defending Rand Paul. And so we're going to get into his reasons for that uh, here in moments, but let's go first to Skype, where Rod is on the line in Canada. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live, Rod, or excuse me, yeah, Rod. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I uh, was born in Venezuela, and I was just there now visiting my parents. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, it was, of course, very depressing. The whole situation. I had to bring. Two suitcases full of uh, just basic goods like razor blades, deodorant. Toilet paper. Toilet mu- paper. Uh, I didn't have to bring that um, but uh, because my parents installed bidets, you know, to deal ah. with the situation. Um, vitamin C, uh, a laptop. like uh, what, Were you that- asked by Venezuelan Border Patrol why you were bringing all of this stuff into the country? Uh, no, I wasn't. It was probably uh, obvious. I, it, yeah, but I think everybody does that. Right, because uh, you man. can't get that stuff easily. Oh, right, and it, like their travel department, like the uh, Secretary of Travel told visitors, like, yeah. make sure you bring your own toilet paper They're when you come seeing, to our right. country. They're right, probably seeing and he's it all obviously, the time. I mean, he's probably not bringing enough to feed a, you know, or support a small army, but, I, you know. Who knows? <laughs> I I think they leave you alone if you're not bringing like a hundred of the same item. Yeah. Ah. Like if if it's evident that you're smuggling stuff for resale, then they they're gonna try to get a bribe from you. But I you see. can get the stuff in. Okay. Yeah. Just the way you said, like suitcases full. I'm imagining like one suitcase full of razors, no. one suitcase full. Oh of no! Sorry, no, that would raise my eyebrows for sure. No, no. I just had two suitcases total. Okay. And they were filled with uh with that variety of different Got things. Got it. Okay. Very basic. All right. And you did that because it's super difficult to actually find those things in places like uh, supermarkets. Exactly. Or you can find certain things, but they're extremely expensive because they are scarce. Now, how many dollars? I mean, were they letting you bring any dollars into the country? Because right now you can get 600 plus bolivars uh, per dollar over there is the last time I looked. Per U.S. dollar. Per U.S. dollar. He's Canadian. Okay, good point. You can bring cash. You can bring cash in, but uh, it would be very stupid of you to use your credit card or something like that. Uh, or to wire money in because then they will give you the official exchange rate and yeah. you don't want to sell at the official exchange rate. Which is 6.3, 6.3. bolivars the, per dollar. 
Exactly, and the the real exchange rate, the black market, is more than a hundred times that. Yeah, at, it is, and like it's been nine. fascinating to watch uh, that change because just within the last year, it's gone from like 150 bolivars per dollar on the black market to over 600 uh, bolivars per dollar. And well, while I was there, while I was there, yeah. I was there for 10 days. I arrived, and it was at 500. When I left, it was at 600. Wow. Uh, it was just incredible. Um, and when was the doing, last time you were there pr prior to this? Uh, maybe three years before that. What's what? Did, what have you seen change in that three years? The well, grocery stores are, empty. Uh, yeah, uh, grocery stores are empty. Uh, everything is you know kind of run down the buildings are not being painted mm. nothing is being maintained people's cars are all just run down um and that's very very obvious to me um and also in my own neighborhood i only saw old people and people with small children uh and people my age i'm i'm 40 uh i just didn't see any anybody why do you think that is? They have all left. And, Where are they? Uh, in the U.S., really? uh, in Europe, in Canada. Like anybody that has any means or a degree uh, will leave. Okay. And also sure. people that have nothing to lose, obviously. These people will also risk everything and leave wow. as well. So um, would you say a lot of people are going into the surrounding countries as well? Yes, apparently there's a huge Venezuelan community in like uh, Panama and people. There used to be a lot of immigration to Venezuela from Colombia when Venezuela was richer than Colombia. Mm -hmm. sure. And now and now these people have had children and so on. So people are reclaiming their Colombian uh, citizenship Interesting. Uh, and going back, uh, even though they had never been there in their entire lives. Um, what else was shocking about your visit uh, back home? In uh, where where were you? Caracas or yeah, I was in Caracas only. Um, I mean, I I saw things that were incredible, like um, expired goods. Like they would say, "Oh, we have here uh, this medicine," and then everybody would go there and do the line, and then somebody in the line would say, "Oh, uh, this medicine is expired." <laughs> Oh. And then oh boy. half the people online would leave, and the other half would say, "Okay, I'll get it anyway." Yeah, that's all and, they got. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Um, wow. And also the expropriation of uh, um, you know private production was very evident. Also, and just a week ago, I think they expropriated the the beer company, the local beer company, the biggest conglomerate. Um, and uh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, if there's no beer, there could be some kind of a change in Venezuela. <laughs> yeah, uh, but well, it's hard right. To People want to drink when times are tough, so they can forget about how times are tough. Right, but exactly. They can't drink. Uh, unfortunately, Venezuelans drink a lot, and they drank yeah. before Chavez, and yeah. so. Uh, yeah, that's a basic thing. If they screw that up, if they're that stupid, then maybe there will be something. Is there an election on the horizon there this year? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it's in December or something like that. Hmm. But uh, Any I, don't, predictions? I don't know for sure. No, I have no idea. Because, first of all, they uh, revamped the whole voting system to a software system. Uh -oh. where they're not uh -oh. Yeah, that's right. They're not counting, you know, <laughs> physical, <laughs> physical ballots. What could or anything possibly like go that. wrong? Exactly. And Nicolas and Maduro forever. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just like Kim Jong Un, you know, yeah. hundred percent of the vote. <sighs> so I don't know. And also, you know, the the government owns the the oil industry, and if the price of oil goes back up, they'll be able to buy more votes. Um, that has always been what they've done. So basically, they will give a lot of gifts to people in the in the lower um, income brackets, and those people will vote for them. Come know? on out, vote for our party. We'll give you some free toilet paper. E exactly, free or beer. <laughs> or bring a, yeah, beer works very well. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do you think that come December that there, whoever you know Maduro and his cronies, the current uh, presidente there, uh, that you know they can pull the wool over people's eyes again? I mean, it's going to be 
pretty hard to come back from from this. I mean, I, I would imagine a lot of people in Venezuela are not happy with uh, the, the status quo. But, you know, that's what I thought. Like many times before, that's what I thought. And these guys got reelected. So people are either stupid or or they're rigging the election. Yeah, it could be. Well, it could be both. Or both. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, thanks, Rod, for Thank the call. You. Very informative. Uh, glad you made it back out of there. Okay. Because things are pretty bad down there right now. Looting and violence on the rise in Venezuela's supermarkets. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We've all heard the news stories, another shooting, and they're getting worse. That's why Infidel Body Armor introduces Infidel Fridays, exclusive 24-hour insider deals to save you money and possibly save your life. Make it a favorite when you log on to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Then be sure to visit each and every Infidel Friday to get special insider pricing, but for 24 hours only. That's InfidelBodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. It's so lonely here. I can barely stand it. I'm waiting for you to stroke your keys and unload over at GCNlive.com slash community. Oh, come on. I know you have things to share. And there's a whole place waiting for you to share them. Light some candles, pour yourself a drink, and get cozy. Log in at GCNlive.com slash community. Lots of people are satisfied. Why not satisfy yourself at GCNlive.com slash community? I'm waiting. Get out of the friend zone at delicious.com. Sciatica, lower back pain, hip pain, poor posture. If you suffer from any of these problems, get ready to relax. Introducing an amazing product that's been in the market for over 25 years, the Sacro Wedgie. It was invented by a football coach using a common sense osteopath technique. He created this device to help his athletes by isolating and supporting the sacrum, which is the keystone of our anatomy. This wedge-shaped bone is in the center of our hips, where a lot of pain starts. Simply relax 20 minutes daily on the amazingly simple Sacro Wedgie and let Gravity do the work, helping muscles rebalance and start releasing nerves. Sit in the sacral wedgie at the computer or while traveling to help correct posture to finally help relieve those stubborn aches and pains for only $33.95. It's made in the USA, so click the family-owned website at sacrowedgie.com, spelled S-A-C-R-O-W-E-D-G-Y.com, or call 1-800-737-9295. That's 1-800-737-9295. Relax your back pain away with the sacral wedgie. Paid non-attorney spokesperson, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. You're listening to Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. This 
is Free Talk Live. You are welcome to join us here toll free whether you want to talk about Venezuela, Rand Paul, uh, Russia destroying tons of food product. Those are some of the things we've been discussing here tonight. The We Includes Me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. You can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Cell 411 is now available on iPhone and iOS devices. Cell 411, we've been talking about it for a couple weeks now. Android users have had access for a little while. Android users, you're going to pay uh, 99 cents for this amazing decentralized micro-social network app that allows you to create and to manage and respond to alerts and emergencies in real time. So let's say you are a part of a neighborhood watch and a neighborhood watch group. You're out and about, you're in the streets, you see something happening, some sort of crime being committed. There's an option for that in cell 411. You can hit the uh, send of an alert to let your friends know, your other neighborhood watchers know that you're observing a crime. It will show them your location it will show you how far, or if you're receiving the alert, how far away you are from that person and allow you to decide whether you can respond or not. So if you're in the neighborhood or you're in the watch or whatever, you're available, you can respond. You, you let that person know Daryl's on the way and then they'll get a notice back. Uh, letting them know someone is, is responding. But it's not just about neighborhood watch. It's perfect for cop block activists, medical workers, or anybody just in a neighborhood or a family or a group of friends who wants to be available, who wants to be on call uh, for somebody who needs help. And this is one of the things that Cell, one, uh, Cell 411 is great at doing already. It's just its first version. they got some cool changes coming up in the upcoming versions, and it's all of $0.99 cents for Android users, iPhone and iOS users. You get an introductory week for free, so you can go grab the app right now. If you, I believe it's still free. If you go now to the Apple uh, App Store and search for Cell 411, C-E-L-L and 411. I've got it. We're using it here in Keene. And it's working so far. I'm looking forward to seeing it developed over time. But uh, 99 cents is well worth it if it helps save a life or helps prevent somebody from getting arrested. Uh, for instance, cell 411. All right. So uh, we can talk more about Venezuela here in moments. Also, the free the nipple. Ten reasons to not support that. We'll see what those are coming up here in a little bit. Uh, also, you can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. We're back to the story from the uh, Ron Paul, one of his supporters back in 2008, Jonathan Bidlack. He was Ron Paul's fundraising director in 2008. He's kind of been – he in the, in the early portion of this article over at Politico.com has told his story. You know, how did he end up uh, on the campaign staff of Ron Paul? And he's told that story and is talking about how, obviously, Ron Paul did not become president, but he did uh, make inroads within the GOP, or rather the uh, Libertarians failed to make the inroads, but he did uh, ignite a nationwide movement that is hungering for someone to take it to the next level. I think that's the failure, though, is that they're expecting it to be one man, when I don't know if you're going to see you know, sort of this great man like Ron Paul arise again uh, at that level on the national scene. Some people wanted it to be Rand Paul, but obviously he's not even a shadow of his uh, his father. Back to the story from Politico. Enter Dr. Rand Paul. Rand Paul was always supposed to be different from Ron Paul. Any serious political observer realized he could not win a Republican nomination or any nomination holding the hardcore positions of his father. But his pragmatism has evolved over the years into boilerplate Republican talking points. Today, he's a candidate who has very few unique positions on anything. His recent polling and fundraising numbers show the results of this trajectory. And it wasn't always this way. Rand Paul won national acclaim two years ago with his well-publicized 13-hour filibuster of the president's drone policy. Paul declared on the Senate floor, I will speak until I can no longer speak. I will speak as long as it takes until the alarm is sounded from coast to coast that our Constitution is important, that our right to trial by jury is precious, unquote. Now, let, let me ask this question. Do either one of you know what he was actually filibustering? I don't recall. I think you probably told me at the time, though. No, I'm not sure. The nomination of CIA director John Brennan. Okay. So mm -hmm. he, he just took the opportunity to, you know, I can filibuster, so I'm going to filibuster. And he talked he, about drones. He made it about drones. He made it about drones. And most people think that he was filibustering some sort of authorization for a ah. drone program. He was filibustering the nomination of the CIA director, John Brennan. 
After that impressive performance, I was thrilled to stand with Rand, as were millions of other Americans. Public opinion on drones changed almost overnight. As Business Insider noted, quote, support for targeting American citizens suspected of being terrorists abroad dropped 13 points among Republicans, 17 points among Democrats, and a whopping 23 points among independents. Paul comfortably polled at or near the top of the field for the rest of the year and through 2014. Fast forward to April 2015, following a controversial drone strike that killed two alleged American al-Qaeda operatives and two hostages, one of whom was also American, Rand Paul struck a very different tone. He said at that time, quote, that's this year now, I've been an opponent of using drones on people not involved in combat, but if you're holding hostages, you kind of are involved in combat. And you don't get due process or anything like that in a war zone, he said. He added that the captors, quote, probably got what was coming to them, unquote. Though he regretted, quote, some innocent people lost their lives, the hostages, unquote. Paul's rationale perhaps wouldn't have been noteworthy coming from another Republican. But in a time when there was significant criticism of the loss of hostages, it was baffling to libertarians that Senator Paul would come to a lame duck Democratic president's defense. Unlike many libertarians, I don't expect pure libertarian orthodoxy from Rand Paul. I don't expect pure libertarian orthodoxy from anybody that calls themselves a Republican. If a national figure is demonstrably closer to my ideals in the competition, that's good enough. But the problem remains that Senator Paul is demonstrably all over the map. After months of skepticism of U.S. involvement in Syria and Iraq, Rand Paul called for airstrikes authorized by Congress. He later sought to declare war on ISIL and put boots on the ground. He's done a complete 180 on the threat from Iran, signing the Tom Cotton letter opposing the recent nuclear deal. And while being one of the more nuanced voices opposing the deal, he still relied on the sort of fear-mongering and misleading rhetoric that his father rejected. He also introduced legislation a couple of years ago to add sanctions to Iran. Which means starving people. Yes. (sighs) Uh, Ron Paul proudly thumbed his nose at Republican orthodoxy, fearlessly voicing his beliefs, no matter how halted or excuse me, no matter how hated his position might make him among the GOP. I remember specifically Ron Paul coming out in favor of legalizing heroin on the stage and getting thunderous applause. Yes. At at one of those debates. I think it was in 2012. His son, of course, cannot win a primary by following that exact model, but he has failed to make the Republican base trust him while risking losing his own. He said gay marriage I thought the him. Republican base was his base. Well, I don't know. I'm not involved with the Republican Party, so... <laughs> right, but no, the, the, the way th- this guy wrote that, it sort of is indicating that, you know, self-described libertarians is Rand Paul's base. I think he's su- su- uh, suggesting that, yeah, there's a base of libertarians there. But I think that's true. Rand Paul is doing all of these Republican-y things. His base is Republicans. Yeah, didn't he say that he was going to run as a Republican? I mean, He is running as a he Republican. He is a Republican. Yeah, he's running as a Republican. He's not a Libertarian. No, absolutely He not. even says, I'm not a Libertarian. He, he was asked during uh, this thing that happened in Manchester that was not a debate that happened on Monday, and he said, I'm a constitutional conservative. He said gay marriage offends him and called for tent revivals to combat America's moral crisis while simultaneously supporting ending marriage licenses altogether. He supports lowering sentences for drug offenses and is publicly courting the marijuana industry while very consistently making clear that he opposes legalization. And in recent weeks, he's gone so far as to apparently jump onto the Trump bandwagon in seeking to defund so-called sanctuary cities. He spent months reaching out to minority communities and branding himself as a different kind of Republican on police brutality and criminal justice reform. But when Baltimore was burning following Freddie Gray's suspicious death in police custody, Paul couldn't have been more tone deaf, scoffing how glad he was that his train didn't stop in Baltimore and offering what seemed to be 1990s era moral majority musings on the downfall of the family. Unlike Ron Paul, who voted to cut government spending at every opportunity, Rand Paul voted last year for a flawed veterans bill that included $10 billion in unoffset new spending and then quietly offered an amendment this March to hike the Pentagon budget by billions more, a stunning reversal from his 2011 calls for a 23% reduction. After widespread outcry, advisors insisted that critics had just gotten it wrong, that Senator Paul had offered the amendment, which included various politically impossible and non-defense cuts, to draw a line in the sand on whether Senators Rubio and Cruz are willing to pay for big Pentagon spending. This sounds almost Nancy Pelosi-esque 
of we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. We have to <laughs> increase the spending for the Pentagon so that we can cut it. The point was lost on nearly all media and, to my knowledge, has yet to be highlighted by Senator Paul himself. Rand Paul and his defenders, of which I have frankly grown wary of being part, can explain nearly every one of these aberrations from past positions or ideology, but that's not the point. As the old saying goes, politics is like dating. If you're explaining, you're losing. 855 450 free. We'll come back. We'll talk about the uh, the boobs and more about this boob, Rand Paul. It's free talk live. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal for Icy Hot. If you've got pain, you need the patch. The Icy Hot patch. Powerful, targeted, fast-acting pain relief that stays put without the mess. Icy to dull the pain, hot to relax it away. In a variety of sizes, from back, shoulders, knees, even arthritis. So you're covered whenever and wherever you hurt. Stop pain right at the source with Icy Hot patches. Pain's no match for the Icy Hot patch. For temporary topical pain relief, use only as directed. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. Empowering with information. The Chris Geo Show. GCN. Well, that's our news. I'm Keith Peters in Washington. Life in prison. That's the verdict handed down by jurors to James Holmes, the man convicted of murdering 12 people and wounding 70 others in an Aurora, Colorado movie theater in 2012. Judge Carlos Samor thanks the jury for its work. What you've done is commendable, and without you, we couldn't have the system uh, of justice that we have, and we could not have the democracy that we have. So kudos to all of you, and my thanks to all of you. A death sentence required a unanimous verdict. Holmes will serve without the possibility of parole. Also at SRNNews.com, the Republican candidates for president fanned out to other parts of the country after last night's two debates from Cleveland, Ohio. At the Red State Blog Forum in Atlanta today, GOP presidential candidate Marco Rubio jokes that last night's presidential debate in Cleveland aged him a bit. When I talk about changing Social Security and Medicare, you know who I'm talking to? I'm talking to me. I'm 44 years old. After last night, I feel 45. <laughs> My people and younger than me, our Medicare and Social Security is going to be different. Tomorrow's lineup at Red State includes Jeb Bush, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, and former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. A judge is giving the State Department a few months to provide the Associated Press with thousands of documents related to Hillary Clinton. The order came today from U.S. District Judge Richard Leon. It means the documents will be released well before the spring presidential primary elections. They include Clinton's schedules and calendars from her time as Secretary of State. The family of a young driver struck and killed by Tony Stewart's car on an upstate New York dirt track filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the NASCAR star Friday. The lawsuit was filed as Stewart returns to Watkins Glen International on the one-year anniversary of the fatal crash. On Wall Street, the down by 46 points, the NASDAQ dropped 13. This is SRN News. 
paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisements. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, this is an important announcement for anyone who had surgery to implant a blood clot device. If you or a loved one had a surgery in the past 10 years and your doctor used an IVC filter to trap blood clots, call 800-770-3234 right now. These devices can be life-threatening and you may be entitled to cash compensation. The FDA is evaluating adverse events caused by these blood clot devices, which can lead to serious injury and even death. These devices could break and lead to serious injury. Please call 800-770-3234 now. Time is limited. Call 800-770-3234 if you or a loved one has one of these dangerous blood clot devices, as you may be entitled to a cash award and compensation. Our toll-free phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-770-3234. That's 800-770-3234. 800-770-3234. Two military courts in Thailand have sentenced a man to 30 years in prison and a woman to 28 years for insulting the monarchy. Even by the draconian standards of the Les Majesty law here, these are startlingly long sentences. One defendant, a 29-year-old mother who works in a hotel, was given 56 years in prison for seven posts she made on Facebook deemed insulting to the monarchy. The other defendant, a tour operator, was given 60 years. Both sentences were halved after the defendants pleaded guilty. BBC correspondent Jonathan Head reporting from Bangkok, Thailand. A French search plane lifted off Friday for a bird's-eye view of Reunion Island, seeking any more potential debris from Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. French authorities said Friday they've launched a one-week-long operation with boats and aircraft scouring the Indian Ocean Island, where a wing fragment was discovered nine days ago. This is SRN News. A Senate report says the government should crack down on airline fees for things like seat reservations, checked baggage, and ticket changes or cancellations, which are often unfair or hidden from consumers. The report says there appears to be no connection between the price of checked bag fees and the costs incurred by the airlines which impose them. The report also notes that five airlines surveyed by the committee staff charge consumers a flat fee for changing or canceling a ticket, no matter how far in advance of a flight the changes are made. The report adds it's very difficult difficult for consumers to find information on airline websites on the cost of change and cancellation fees. SRN's Jeremy House reporting the five airlines surveyed by committee staff included United, Delta, American, Hawaii, and Spirit. Consumers are showing no reluctance to borrow money amid the improving job market. The Fed says consumer borrowing hit another record in June as Americans piled on more debt. More details at SRNnews.com. I'm Keith Peters in Washington. Serious investors and traders want to get 81% return in 60 seconds. We can show you how using our free tool. Use the same secret algorithm professional hedge fund managers use to make billions of dollars in profits. Turn $250 into $4,903 in just seven clicks of a mouse. Our tool is so simple, my 82-year-old grandmother can use it to make insane stock market profits. Best part, it's 100% free. Go to richmoneyrich.com. Watch the free video before the hedge funds make us take it down. richmoneyrich.com. That's richmoneyrich.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Maybe you're as frustrated with this Rand Paul character. Apparently some of his supporters are getting sick of it. We've got a piece here from Politico magazine written by Jonathan Bidlack, who was one of the primary supporters of Ron Paul back in 2008. He was actually the fundraising director. So, you know, somebody with a little bit of street cred as far as running political campaigns Oh, go. sure, yeah. Uh, by the way, with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And he's saying he's tired of defending Rand Paul. He says Ron Paul and, or excuse me, Rand Paul and his defenders, of which I have frankly grown weary of being part, 
can explain nearly every one of these aberrations from past positions or ideology. He was talking about how Rand Paul is, you know, here over a, on, in one year and he's over on another position in another year and he just doesn't seem too consistent in the things that come out of his mouth. So he says his defenders, of course, have explanations. But as the old saying goes, politics is like dating. If you're explaining, you're losing. Now, one thing that I think is incredibly funny, right after Rand Paul put up a web store on his website, I, I don't know exactly what uh, thing he was using, but it just, you know, like... What store software you mean? Or? Right. It, okay. it just appended Rand Paul 2016 to whatever the default product name was. Okay. And the sandals that were being sold were listed for about a day and a half on the Rand Paul website as Rand Paul flip flops. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. No, that's they actually what purpose. they were listed as. Like right. the URL still says flip flops in the URL. But they changed it to sandals. But they changed it to sandals <laughs> in the web store. Any political calculation ultimately must be judged on its results. At this point, Rand Paul isn't driving the political debate as his father did. Now, I remember, I remember he's right about that. Ron Paul, in taking principled stands, sort of by taking those stands, forced people to address them and to some extent moved the debate in the direction of, you know, taking what he was saying seriously. Rand Paul's not doing anything like that. Paul, of course, was supposed to inherit the energy of his father's campaign and translate it into electoral victory. He is failing on both counts. Senator Paul has taken great and ultimately necessary steps to distance himself from some of the more outside of the mainstream positions of Representative Paul. But while he's clearly not his father, the question remains, who is he? And I think that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. He's a Republican. Right. And that's who about all does he Republican say. things. Right. And who doesn't really sound too markedly different on a lot of issues from any other Republican up on that stage. Right. When you've got Donald Trump who's out honesting you on the stage, you've got a problem. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, if Paul hopes to rebound in a front-runner status in the debates, he'd do well to recall the moment that helped launch his father into the national spotlight. In the May 2007 presidential debate, Ron Paul faced a hostile crowd and Mayor Rudy Giuliani demanding he apologize and take back his statement that U.S. involvement overseas has contributed to blowback. Ron Paul did not timidly agree or adopt a marginally different position. Congressman Paul stood his ground and started a movement. It's time for Senator Paul to revisit that playbook. I would say it's time for Senator Paul to open a playbook because uh, at this point he is just, you know, he's not worth really commenting about. Except, you know, we have to here because the libertarian community seems, some of them, seem to be getting behind this guy. and. Yeah. And they're just getting behind him simply because he's the least offensive man on the stage, allegedly. And I'm not really even sure about that anymore. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. Like, I honestly think that Donald Trump is the most honest. Right. I, I don't agree with him on hardly anything, right. but I'll give him honest. At the very least, with the courage to stand against the crowd. Yes. I'll give him that, too. You know, raising his hand and being the only one on the stage during that debate to to swear that he would not necessarily endorse the other candidates. Whoever right. the, whoever ends up being chosen, this is the one guy who broke from the party and said, yeah, uh, no, I, I have to be intellectually honest here and only support somebody I would support. And that means I don't support the rest of you guys. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Donald Trump, not anybody to really write a letter home about, but he's certainly entertaining to watch. And uh, I am looking forward to, at the very least, seeing what other things he's able to stir up. because he, and, <laughs> he's, and he's getting the attention, right? Yeah, like he's he, super attention. He's, he's getting, uh, didn't he win the debate poll or whatever? Uh, the, no clue. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, I, didn't, I don't look closely at these, these debates, but I thought I saw at least one poll showing Donald Trump uh, winning winning the, the debate. and it, It's entirely possible. Uh, now, there was something during the last hour you had mentioned about uh, the Rand Paul super PACs yeah. were mentioned briefly in that article, and there's news about one of the people that was running one of Rand Paul's super now, PACs. Now, what is a super PAC? It's a fundraising mechanism, it's right? It's a fundraising mechanism that is not officially connected to the campaign, but it's generally run by somebody that's close to the campaign, and you can't do, like, official coordination, but it's sort of, like, unofficially I see. official. So it's a sneaky way of kind of 
extra funding for a campaign. Raising a bunch of extra funds, and because of some FEC interpretation of the Supreme Court's ruling in the Citizens United case, super PACs have no limits on the amount of money that they can raise. There's no limits on the amount that you can donate to a super PAC. But there Got are it. limits on how much you can donate to an individual candidate. So a super PAC okay. can't necessarily endorse a candidate, or can they? They cannot. Okay. Uh, but you could have they a could super run- PAC called Rand Paul Super PAC, and they not can do stuff Paul. for the Rand Paul people, but not directly in connection and not in cahoots with. So we're the Rand Paul Super PAC, but we're not affiliated with Rand Paul. Exactly. That kind of thing. That's, that's weird. So yeah. Jesse Benton. <laughs> who is Ron Paul's grandson-in-law that right. worked for the Ron Paul 08 and 2012 Wasn't campaigns. Wasn't he the media director or something for Ron Paul? I forget what his title <laughs> is. I, and I, I tried name. Googling, and all I could find was top staffer. Yeah, I remember hearing his name quite a bit back in the day. Yeah, so back in 2011, uh, Jesse Benton and a couple others wound up giving a donation to an Iowa state senator in exchange for that state senator giving an endorsement of Ron Paul. This senator previously had endorsed Michelle Bachman and then held a press conference. I'm now endorsing Ron Paul. And wow. Jesse Benton and these others made sure to tell him, if anybody asked, nobody gave you money for this endorsement. Okay, (laughs) wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Well, now Jesse Benton and these two others have been indicted Uh on federal charges of conspiracy, obstructing an investigation, (laughs) submitting false campaign finance reports, and making false statements to the FBI. That sounds pretty serious. The other two operatives, John Tate and Dimitros Kasari, are also alleged in the payoff. Boy, what a stupid idea. I mean, what? How much benefit did you really receive from bribing some politician in, what was it, Idaho? In Iowa? I- Iowa in 2011. According to the Justice Department, the three operatives paid more than $70,000 concealed as legitimate oh. campaign expenditures to then State Senator Kent Sorensen in order to shift his support from Michelle Bachman to Ron Paul. Sorensen made Couldn't the switch. Couldn't you just go buy votes cheaper than that? I mean, seriously, $70,000. I know that's illegal to buy votes as well, yes. but I mean, if you're... It's going to be easier to do it that way than to... I don't know if it'll be easier, but yeah. I mean, my God. He, he made the switch publicly on December 28th, 2011 in Des Moines. I mean, $70,000. Think of the advertising you could buy for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many how many local radio ads would a seventy thousand dollar ad campaign buy? I mean, this is a obvious. Bunch. I mean, the the idea that this I, Iowa senator or whoever he was, yeah, that state he's, senator in Iowa, that he's got enough sway that if he gets on television and says, "I am now changing my vote to Ron Paul," I am endorsing Ron Paul. What's that going to motivate? Five people. They're going to be. I mean, how many fans does this guy really have that are going to say to no themselves? Clue. Well, Senator so and so is now behind Ron Paul. I'm going to have to switch my my vote. I just don't see that as being well, a real and, motivating factor. Well, one thing that sets Iowa apart from most of the other states, it's the caucus, the caucus, yeah, which means that all of the voting is very public. So you go, you stand in a room, and then you mm. coordinate over into piles of people. All right. So this dude's in uh, some serious hot water here. Yes. Right? There's more coming up. 855, 450 free. We'll talk about boobs on the way. Shall they be freed? It's Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. 
Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV You're fired. According to the Small Business Administration, 75% of small businesses plan to eliminate jobs or reduce workers' hours to part-time. You're You're fired. fired. According to Gallup, the unemployment rate recently jumped to nearly 9%, and the underemployment rate hit a staggering 17.9%. You're You're fired. fired. One out of three young adults and one out of two recent college graduates are underemployed. Hello, I'm Keith Abel, a pharmacist and a home business entrepreneur. In 2011, I became one of those statistics myself. Instead of looking for another job in corporate America, I joined Dr. Joel Wallet, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie Guy. We're creating steady incomes for ourselves and would like to show you how to do the same. If you want to supplement your current income, replace your income, so you don't have to become one of the statistics, then give me a call toll-free at 866-257-3105. 866-257-3105. You're fired. Don't wait till you hear those words. Start creating an extra income today. 866-257-3105. Hi, this is Walt Augustinowitz. I'm the founder and CEO of ID Stronghold. By now you've heard our commercials about wallets that protect you from electronic pickpocketing. Ten years ago, I created a way to protect my own cards from prying eyes after government officials started talking about issuing a national ID card with a built-in radio chip called RFID. I felt having to broadcast my personal information was an invasion of privacy. Soon after, it was also announced that credit cards, debit cards, U.S. passports, hotel room keys, and even transit passes would all soon incorporate RFID. It was then I formed ID Stronghold to share my inventions in blocking RFID signals with the world. There are a lot of misconceptions out there today about RFID. I encourage everyone to get informed and get protected. Please go to IDStronghold.com and get the facts and the wallet sleeves or badge holders you need to protect your personal financial data. You'll be pleasantly surprised that through our direct sales model, you won't pay more than other comparable unprotected wallets. It is as though the protection is free. Visit IDStronghold.com today. Now more free talk live. Call in toll free at 855 855- 450 free. That's 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. 855 450 3733. Your comments. Certainly welcome. On Rand Paul, he is just disappointing people left and right. Even those people who were his supporters are getting burned out. And it's not just this guy that we were sharing the story from Politico. Uh, There's another Rand Paul supporter right here in Keene, New Hampshire. He's a a local state representative who actually got an A-plus rating by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. I ran into him at the county fair, and he was telling me that uh, he's getting pretty tired of, uh, you know, a back in this guy and he still was backing him. He still had the Rand t-shirt on and it brought some Rand signage out. And I think he's backing him just because he's the least objectionable person from his perspective. But, and this guy is a Republican. So he he's going to support a Republican. Right. Um, yeah. but, but what he pointed out was that he's not as willing to get up at three in the morning anymore for Rand Paul and get out and, you know, start working on a campaign thing or whatever he'd be more likely to wake up at noon 
And so he really, what he was saying to me was that he, he's he's pretty burned on right. on this whole Rand Paul thing. And and the reason why, the reason he told me was because he feels like Rand Paul isn't as principled as his father. And it's becoming clear as the campaign rolls on. And it's hard for people who are principled. And this guy's just a, a Republican. He's just a, a pretty good, liberty-friendly Republican. He's not really a libertarian. Uh, but he's good enough of a Republican to actually have voted an A-plus rating with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, which is a pretty darn good indicator that he's at least relatively friendly to the ideas of freedom. So, you know, you're burning out people who care about liberty, uh, Rand. You're burning out people who are excited about freedom and want to get behind a candidate who's actually promoting those things. And they don't really necessarily feel like that Rand Paul is that candidate. And so on one hand, you know, this is the trade-off, right? On one hand, you can uh, water your message down if you believe that's what Rand Paul's doing. Because some people believe, why, Rand Paul is secretly an anarchist, but he just can't say those things like his father did. And so therefore, (laughs) you know, you just have to deal with him telling lies to you. And for me, I'm not interested if that's the truth, and that is that Rand Paul is telling lies in order to get elected so he can bring in some sort of secretive anarchist uh, playbook. From his father, I'm not okay with that because I don't think that you should tell lies in order to get elected. I think that if liberty is important to you, you should talk about liberty because the most important thing in one of these elections is to get the word out about freedom. Right. That's what Ron Paul did so successfully. Sure, he didn't win the election, he didn't win the primary. But what he did do successfully was raise millions of dollars that he could use to promote his ideas of liberty out to the rest of the country and the rest of the world. To me, that was the true success of Ron Paul's campaign. You can't say that about Rand Paul's campaign because, one, he's not promoting liberty. He's not promoting anything that resembles liberty. He's, like, good on some issues and some other issues he's not great at all. And that's really all you can say about him. So while that may be good to pander to the Republican base, it's not going to be good enough to get the Republican base excited about your campaign because you're no really not that different from the rest of the Republicans. So what is there about Rand Paul, as this guy Jonathan Bidlack asks in his article, who is he? You know, why is he so special? What what makes him outstanding? Well, really, I haven't seen much at all. And so to the people who are coming from our perspective who love the ideas of liberty and we want to see somebody promoting them, we can't get excited about Rand Paul. I'm not going to help his campaign. I'm not going to give his campaign any money. I gave money to the Ron Paul campaign. Mm -hmm. I've never donated to a Republican campaign ever. But the Ron Paul campaign I gave money to because he was actually out there talking about liberty. So Rand Paul is in this place where he's not principled like his father, so he's not going to turn on the principled uh, supporters. There are some people who are principled who are supporting him sort of half-heartedly because, well, he's better than the rest of them, allegedly. Right, he's the lesser lesser of the evils. But that's not going to, like this guy said, that's not going to get them out of bed at three in the morning to get behind this guy's campaign. And then there were also a lot of the... People that, shall we say, militia types that really liked Ron and just seem to not even pay attention to anything that Rand's doing. So it's not just the libertarians mm. that are split. Mm-hmm. So different. There's groups. all of these, you know, like uh, really hardcore conservatives that got behind Ron because they liked what he was saying that they're not necessarily getting behind Rand. You had some of the anti-war liberals that supported Ron just because of the anti-war thing. So, yeah, like they, there's so much more than yeah. just the libertarian. Great point. He's losing. That Rand Paul is not getting support from. Right. So you've just sort of got this milk toast uh, candidate that is slightly marginally better, maybe, than uh, than the rest of the pack, and it's hard for anybody. And that to get depends on that. what you believe of what he says on any given day, right? Because he seems to be. I mean, some people believe he's a liar, and so, well, you know, if he's willing to tell lies to you or willing to tell lies to the mainstream media or whoever, then maybe he's lying to all kinds of people, right? And sure. apparently, he's uh, chummy with this uh, Jesse Benton character who is now indicted federally for, what exactly were the charges again, Daryl, conspiracy uh, to bribe or something like Uh, that? Because he was going to bribe. Right, so the allegation was that Jesse Benton, through the Ron Paul campaign, 
gave $70,000 as a bribe to a sitting state senator in Iowa. And that senator pled guilty to some charges last year. So and Benton, so he gave him up. Benton may, uh, has charges of conspiracy, obstructing an investigation, submitting false campaign finance reports, and making false statements to the FBI. We'll keep you in the loop here on this. Coming up, the 10 reasons to oppose the Free the Nipple campaign. We'll start in on uh, on that here in just a moment. I want you to know about Bitcoinist.net. It is the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Bitcoinist is the prime online destination for information about Bitcoin and the digital currency industry. And their website integrates a community forum breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news. They also aim to cover fintech and blockchain tech news as well. Bitcoinist has very sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and much more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies, from beginners to experts. Go to Bitcoinist.net. That's Bitcoinist.net. Uh, barring any other comments on Rand Paul, I think we should talk about Free the Nipple. So let me just add one thing that Jesse Benton and these other two characters have a court appearance in federal court September 3rd. The state senator from Iowa pled guilty last year to charges that he caused a political campaign to falsely report expenditures to federal authorities, as well as charges of obstruction of justice. He is currently awaiting sentencing. Mm. All right. So. Oops. Yeah, let, let's get into the uh, 10 reasons, according to From this where, yeah. woman on thoughtcatalog.com. A woman writing these, okay. Ona Artist, and there's a photo that I am guessing is her. She appears to be a very attractive woman. And she's saying, oppose She is free saying, the oppose free the nipple. And, she, and this is written from like her perspective. So she's serious about this. Yes, she's she actually is against very it. serious. All right, uh, I want to hear these ra- these rationale because the free the nipple thing's looking pretty big. This is going to be an event that happens not just in New Hampshire, uh, but elsewhere. And the New Hampshire one's got over 800 people on Facebook saying they're attending. Now, how many actually will attend is another question. More coming up. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Katie offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KatiArmor.com. Come and take it. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while, even very smart, very accomplished people. It's part of being human. A quote taken out of context, a legal problem, an unfortunate photograph. Once that embarrassing thing is on the internet, it can spread like a terrible rash because people love to dig up dirt, even when it's not real dirt. Put it to rest. Call for a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. Businesses, public figures, and professionals turn to Reputation.com for good reason. We protect your online image by helping make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current ag information possible reputation.com because word travels fast learn more about what the experts at reputation.com can do for you call for a free analysis today 800-831-0771 that's 800-831-0771 all right so suddenly walmart ebay amazon everybody wants to ban the rebel flag well the rebel flag is an important part of american history the rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of southern pride and southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. 
Go to rflags.com. That's R, like Rebel, R, the letter R, rflags.com. Get your Rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? rflags.com. That's rflags.com. Go now. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extendivite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extendivite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years. Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. This is Free Talk Live. Call in toll free. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 free. Free Talk Live. Join us on the radio. Whether you want to talk about Rand Paul and your thoughts on his campaign, is it going as well as you expected? Apparently, one of his supporters says he's tired of defending Rand Paul. You can, uh, I'm going to post that full story over on our Facebook and Twitter for you to take a look at when you get a chance. Of course, you can access our Facebook and Twitter easily by going to news.freetalklive.com. That'll actually link you over to both of those, as well as our email list, which is a great way to follow the latest about Free Talk Live behind the scenes. Go to news.freetalklive.com. Another great website, freedomsphoenix.com. They're uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com and get signed up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. Daryl, you've got what appears to be a major babe who has written uh, this 10 reasons why free the nipple should not happen, right? Uh, 10 reasons why you should not support the free the nipple movement. And if people don't support it enough, then it's not going to happen, right? So uh, this person wants to stop free the nipple. And that's an event that's coming up on August 23rd. Free the nipple is more than just the event. It's a movie too, right? Free the nipple was a movie. It's become like its own sort of hashtag on the Twitters right. and other things. It's a movie that sort of launched a, uh, a topless movement. campaign. Yes. Which is pretty great. I mean, that's an amazing success story for a movie, When right? did this movie come out? 2011, I believe. Oh, okay. It's fairly recent. Within the last few years. I have not seen the movie, and we've been doing topless events in New Hampshire since long before Free the Nipple, and topless events like gotopless.org, I think, is uh, is a website that is involved yes. in that. They've been doing it, I think, since before Free the Nipple as well. So it's not like Free the Nipple was first on the scene or anything like that, but for some reason, uh, gotopless.org, when you go to their website, they actually have a map where it shows various different locations around the globe where people are going to be going topless on August 23rd. So for some reason, there's also Free the Nipple, which is happening in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, also on August 23rd. Right. I'm not real sure what the relationship is between gotopless.org and or this movie. But nonetheless, what are the reasons why this topless event should uh, should should stop? Well, Again, she's not talking about the event. She's talking okay. about the entirety the of whole movement. Free the Nipple. Okay, got it. Which uh, includes the event. Right. She begins by saying, Last week, without any warning whatsoever, my Instagram account was deleted. 
The 400 posts I'd shared with my follower base of roughly 71,000 were titillating, but I had painstakingly followed every rule listed in the community guidelines section. I had not featured nudity, sexual intercourse, genitals, close-ups of fully nude buttocks, or nipples. Hmm. Since my Instagram account was the promotional backbone of an online celebrity art project I'm working on, it's been featured in art forums, so I promise I'm not just playing the artist card. Losing it was devastating. Hmm. I felt utterly violated. After 16 stressful hours spent appealing the decision, they reactivated my account, explaining that I had been flagged as sexually suggest sexually suggestive, whatever that actually means, remains conveniently unclear of course some might think this is this would be a particularly good time for me to voice support for free the nipple a social media hashtag documentary film and political movement that claims to seek female equality and empowerment by securing the right for women to show their naked breast everywhere from instagram to the streets of indiana Celebrities like Miley Cyrus, Rihanna, Courtney Love, Lena Dunham, and Chelsea Handler have all embraced the cause. I will not. Hmm. Below are 10 reasons why I disagree wholeheartedly with Free the Nipple and believe it's time we all shifted our focus to a phenomenon I call Pay the Nipple. Interesting. Uh, Number hmm. one, Instagram is actually better without nudity. Instagram is great as it is, particularly because the restrictions push users to be creative in showcasing their sex appeal without taking all of their clothes off. It's fun for models to come up with different ways to use the platform without violating the rules. Limitations inspire exciting new platforms of expression. My only complaint is that Instagram's rules are ambiguous, so what exactly is permissible is not so clear-cut. Number two... Your naked photos would empower Instagram, not you. Some women might feel empowered. This sounds like more of a list of why Instagram is something, but not the nipple campaign. Right. So I, I'll go ahead and skip uh, her explanation of that one, mm-hmm. of why it empowers Instagram and not you. I get what she's saying there, though. Uh, number three, she says social media platforms are legally allowed to delete anyone's account. Yeah, that that is true. And so what again, the hell does that I'll, have I'll, to do with free the nipple? I, I, she I'll sounds like she's that. really jaded. Right. I, I'll skip the explanation of that one. Okay. Number four, free the nipple is tacitly against sex work and a sex healthy society. Hmm. Though perhaps not the intent of its proponents, free the nipple is in many ways a socially conservative movement masquerading what? as a liberal cause. I got to hear this one. Were it not. It would have long ago encouraged women to charge for their nudity rather than give it away for free out of respect for all women, including the many who make their living as sex workers. I am sorry. I don't think that it's fair to say that Free the Nipple is a socially conservative movement and that the evidence that it's socially conservative is that they're not charging to, to show the boobs. Is that no. what she's saying? The, yeah, that's, that sounds is ridiculous. That, is that what she just said? That's basically what she just said. Uh, She continues here, a sex-healthy society demands supporting women and men in making their own decisions when it comes to consensual experiences, whether or not money is exchanged. She's part of the problem. And uh, so so what she's saying is, is that boobs are special and boobs are important. And our boobs, women's boobs, are better than men's boobs. I agree. And so therefore... (laughs) Of course you would. They deserve to be charged for rather than just having you women out there showing them off for free. She is upset because she knows that if this becomes more commonplace, if women being out and about in public without their shirts on topless, you know, is a commonplace occurrence, maybe that will take away the sexual mystique that allows her to profit from her breasts, perhaps. So she's mad about that, right? Okay, Danica, that, you're the that, woman in the that, studio. What do you think? Okay. I mean, I can kind of see where you're coming from, where if a boob is exposed and everyone suddenly gets over the initial shock of seeing a boob, maybe she won't make money anymore. So that that kind of makes sense where she's coming from. But it's just like, okay, a boob is a boob is a boob. You know, a, My nipple is the same as anyone else's nipple. Why is it so bad for me to show you're undercutting the sex business danica that's why oh so to to quote i think it was jeff foxworthy 
uh, once a man sees one pair of boobs, he wants to see all of them. No. I I don't know. I mean, I and I, I get There's where some she, I could live without. I get she's <laughs> I get where she's coming from because in a way it could you know it, it could make some some sort of an impact, but we don't know that for sure. Who cares? And who cares? Is it is it important that she make the same level of money every year, or is it more important that women be equal to men and be able to you know as be as comfortable in uh, a hot a hot day as a man legally can? I say the latter is more important. Mm -hmm. She continues here by saying this, meaning that, uh, you know, if women charge instead of giving it away for free, Mm. this will allow us to get to the point where sex can be seen as a beautiful, natural, positive experience between two consenting adults that may or may not involve a financial component. I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm fine with sex sex being seen as a positive experience, but I I also think she's damaging, uh, you know, the freedom or the topless movement here by suggesting that toplessness is equivalent to sex or that toplessness is necessarily a sexy act and i don't think it should be considered that number five she says what's good for rich celebrities isn't always good for everyone else who's she talking about there's a bunch of celebrities that got named yeah. at the beginning of Miley this article. Cyrus. Well, I could probably that have come out and said, "I support free the nipple." I could probably comment on that too when we come back. Sure, let's I, do I that. Can see that because I don't see Miley Cyrus is going to s- sell any more albums or fewer albums based on her position about free the nipple. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. There's more coming up. If you have a comment, join us. Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level 3 and level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic any time. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. 
Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, Doug, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. You're listening to Free Talk Live. Call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Moments remain. we got enough time for you. If you want to join us here, we're talking about Free the Nipple. It's going to be happening August 23rd. So we're just about two weeks away from that event. Hundreds of people are saying they're going to be attending here in New Hampshire at the Hampton Beach uh, iteration of this. And I think that's fantastic. And there are a lot of uh, ladies posting on the Facebook group. Actually, now 957 are saying that they are attending and there's still two weeks to go. I, that's obviously going to be over 1,000. It was at 800-something uh, just a couple of days ago. So I would say well over a thousand likely going to claim to be attending on Facebook. What that will actually turn into as far as real life is another question. Sure. It could be more. It could be less. Um, I don't know what to expect, uh, but I bet you at least a few dozen folks will be there. And I think it'll probably be a pretty great event. This lady, however, is saying that the movement is no good. The Free the Nipple movement as a whole, the movie, the events, the topless events that are going to be happening. The on, hashtag. The Everything hashtag. related to Free the Nipple is yeah. bad. And Danica, you wanted to comment on uh, an aspect of, of this. I right. Think. So Daryl brought up a point that he had listed several female celebrities about how they're all about supporting the nipple, uh, right. Free the Nipple. Like Miley uh, Cyrus. Like Miley Cyrus, Rihanna. The celebrities that endorse it, they get... How should I say this? They get paid to be kind of, you know, out there, raunchy, sexual. It drives money for them. They're going to sure. be even, you know, have more fans. They're going to have more people listening after them. Someone such as I, uh, you know, a regular person in a normal town, we go about like spreading, you know, topless Tuesdays, free the nipple. It's likely going to put our jobs in jeopardy. Uh, we're, you know, we might get in trouble with some relatives. And I know that. It's just like, hey, we shouldn't allow these kind of things to impact our lives. But, you know, I, it would suck losing my job over something like that. You know, I, I can see where it would affect more people on a personal level than, say, like a celebrity level. So what you're saying is that uh, Miley Cyrus isn't going to take any kind of hit to her career because she's... I don't think any sort this. of negative thing. She might get some sort of backlash from conservative people, but I don't think overall it would, in fact, probably drive it more because people would be searching for her. People would be more interested in her. But this woman doing the uh, 10 reasons to be against the Free the Nipple is saying that, that uh, Miley Cyrus and crew are undercutting her value because basically what she does is she takes sexy photos and puts them on the Internet. Uh, that's your interpretation. I've not actually my read what she wrote yeah. after she said what's good for rich celebrities isn't always good for everyone else. She said, I respect a lot of the celebrities who support Free the Nipple, but the reality is that these celebrity women don't need money or an Instagram account to promote their work. The countless average women following in their suit aren't as fortunate the massive nudity giveaway the rich and famous are encouraging essentially <laughs> results in the financial disenfranchisement of working class women who can't afford to forego the income their naked breast might generate. What's doubly ironic is that these celebrities gain value for their brands by appearing socially progressive, while the no-name woman urged to forsake any revenue for their nude photos are often viewed as sluts for doing the same. Number six, she says the nudist premise behind Free the Nipple is not realistic. And there apparently is a claim that Free the Nipple is all just about nudity. 
Uh, number seven, she says the movement confuses in real life with online life. Number- I want to know more about. I'm sorry. I know that we want to get through it, but I do want to know more about both of those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's not realistic about the nudist beliefs? Exactly? She says, arguably, free the nipple is a kind of nudist movement. Nudism is about desexualizing the mostly naked female body so men and women can hang around in the buff without worrying about mostly male arousal getting in the way. This is wishful thinking, not reality. Male arousal is the presence, or rather in the presence of a female body, is the basis of life for heterosexuals. When women flash their boobs... You can expect more erections, not fewer. Is there any science behind that? I don't know. She doesn't cite a source. Yeah, she's not citing anything, but she's making it sound like there's like a certainty about that. Uh, Confusing real life with online. She says, of course, women should be allowed to sunbathe topless and breastfeed wherever they want. But does that mean they should be freely showing their breasts on the web in the name of female equality? She says no. The internet offers new, (laughs) unique, and safe opportunities for women to exploit the value of nudity by choice, and those opportunities are a separate matter from the right to to feed your baby at McDonald's. Why do you have to exploit yourself for money? I mean, why can't you just go topless in the park? Why can't you just go topless on the beach? Why does that have to be a a competition for her? She's acting like a bunch of women going to the beach topless is going to somehow undercut her ability to make money as an online performer. And it's ridiculous. I mean, there's not going to be anything that's sexy about a group of uh, men and women topless on Hampton Beach and a group photograph or whatever, people smiling and waving at the camera. That's not a turn on, at least for most, I don't imagine for most people. Right. And no one's going to subscribe to that website. It seems strange to me that, uh, you know, basically she's sort of advocating for, you know, like, Topless models need to unionize to prevent uh, unfair oh competition. <laughs> but like you don't see prostitutes in places where prostitution is legal saying women should not be allowed to be picked up at bars because they're giving yeah. away for free what I get paid for. Yeah, right. that's essentially that's what a she's very arguing. Good point. <laughs> Uh, number on. eight, she says, few women go topless even when they're allowed to. That's true. That's very true. But that's whole the whole point of this event is to normalize toplessness for women. Although my one complaint about the event is it only happens once a year, so I don't think that's often enough to really normalize. It things. would take yeah, it would take a while to get it nor- to get it normalized. I imagine if you went topless around, such as I know in New Hampshire, it's perfectly legal. That's if right. someone was walking down the street topless, I imagine they'd get cat called the entire time that they were topless. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, she writes, it's actually legal for women to be topless in many states, but do we see lots of topless women in public? Nope. No. No. I've lived in New York City where it's legal, and for years I've never seen a topless woman on the streets. Why? While some might not wish to put up with the cat calls, I think the actual reason is that women know deep down that their breasts have unique value. No, they're not all looking to monetize that value, but almost all of them are looking to experience it on their own terms and to share their naked body with the people they choose to. Number nine, she says financial disempowerment slows political progress. And number 10, many feminists rightfully oppose Free oh, the Nipple's on, particular brand of feminism. Not, number nine, financial disempowerment slows political progress, meaning that, be, I don't want to speculate. What does she mean by that? Uh, she says, few variables are more directly linked to political power than financial independence. Encouraging women to give their physical assets away for free is naive at best and destructive at worst in terms of promoting female financial independence. Sex workers should be respected as businesswomen, not slandered for dragging women backwards. Well, I agree. Sex workers should be respected and sex work should be legal. Uh, You know, whether it's actually having sex for money or it's just taking off your clothes and having sex on camera or doing sexy photos like this lady does. I think that's all fine. And I don't I just don't see this is going to cut into her business. And this really seems to be where this is coming from. Like, right. She seems to be worried about her bottom line, about how much money she can take home from doing her sexy photo uh, business, whatever it is that she does besides that. Right. And I just don't see that as being the case, even if, and this isn't going to happen tomorrow, and it's not going to happen next year, and it's not going to happen in five years, but even if sometime in our lifetime, 
topless women being a, a, out there in public is a thing, and that is something that you do see happen on a more regular basis. That's not going to mean that men are not attracted to women or that women are not attracted to women. The people that seek out photos like hers online, it's not like, it's not like they're going to stop seeking it out because they see some lady walking down the street with her kids and everybody's topless. Right. Now, something that I would like to see is statistics for places like Europe where it's more it's common there. Much more common to see women walk around topless on the beach. Right. Like, okay, let's see. Are these guys still looking at nude photos online? Probably. Good question. Are they are they having like, you know, regular sex in or outside of relationships too? You know, are they are they still finding value in that or you know, would they just rather go and look at all of the topless women? What was number 10 on that list? Number 10, many feminists rightfully oppose free the nipples particular brand of what is called feminism. Many women, she writes, who charge for access to their naked bodies are staunch feminists. The pro-sex versus anti-sex wars have been dividing feminists for some time, and the tension is now manifesting in a fourth wave of feminism that has its roots in the new performative and economic possibilities that the internet deep. provides. I'd love to hear more about what that means, but we are short. In fact, out of time for tonight. Links but on the Facebook page. Over at Free Talk Live on the Facebook on the Facebooks, uh, Daryl's website, fpp.cc. Go there and get some books and more. And we'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency.